Okay, we're back with turn number two of the Legend of Drizzt board game. I took a moment in between turns to read a little bit about the stance in the rulebook, and it doesn't really say anything about it. So I think whatever you are supposed to know about the stance is just whatever is on the card. And the thing that I'm just not clear on is, like, why would you ever just... So this one says, at the start of your hero phase... You can place your stance token on this card, and then while your stance token is on this card, your hero has a plus two bonus AC. And so I just don't understand, like, why wouldn't you just put it on there and leave it on there and never take it off? Because you just get two extra AC all the time, so I don't, I don't... I must be missing something there. Although, again, I haven't opened up the advanced cards yet, so maybe there, maybe Bruner has other abilities where you'd want to swap the uh, stance token back and forth. That's all I can think of, because otherwise, yeah, I don't see any reason to just just put it on there and never take it off. Anyway, so start of turn number two. It's uh, Drizzt's turn to go. And Drizzt is adjacent to the uh, hunting drake at the moment. Let me see here. If I move here... Technically, I guess if I move here, I will be adjacent to both of them, because uh, Drizzt has that double attack. But if I move here, I won't be able to. I won't be able to move again, so I won't be able to explore. So I think I'll stay put and attack the Hunting Drake right where I'm at. So let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let me see, what is his stance? Use at the start of your hero phase, place your... So while your stance token is on this card, whenever you would use an attack power, you can move your hero up to two squares before or after the attack. Okay. So maybe that's what I actually want to do. So I can, at the start of my hero phase, which is what I'm at now, if I put my stance token on this card, whenever I use an attack power, I can... So it kind of it kind of breaks that rule of, you know, being able to move after attacking. Because um, the rule is generally you can attack and then move, or you can move and then attack, or you can move twice. But you can't move, attack, and then finish moving. But this, this Dancing Serpent basically lets you do that. So I'm going to... If I'm reading this correctly, correct me if I'm wrong... But I'm going to go ahead and put his stance token here at the beginning of his hero phase. So that will allow me to take my movement. So while your stance token is on this card, whenever you use an attack power, well, it says attack power, so now I'm wondering... Well, I mean, these are technically powers. They are at-will powers, so... Okay, so, okay. All right, so we're going to move here so that we're adjacent to both monsters. And then we're going to first attack the Hunting Drake. It has an AC of 14, so currently we're targeting the Hunting Drake. So we'll roll the dice a couple times in our hands and then drop it in. And we got a three, of course. We got a three because we're rolling for ourselves. And that's just the way things go. So we'll go ahead and uh, re-roll. So we'll discard that. A couple times in our hand, drop it in. And that's better. Okay, 18. All right, so we hit the Hunting Drake with our re-roll, taking it down. So we'll just put it here. That's going to be experience. The Hunting Drake is now gone off the table. And that means we get a treasure for killing the Hunting Drake. So what do we get? Necklace of Speed. This item remains in play. Okay, so now Driz's uh, movement is 9 until unless this somehow goes away. So let's go ahead and update the sheet before we get too far into this. So uh, this is still kind of in A, not applicable. Uh, he moved, he attacked, he killed, so he got the treasure. And now he has that... Um, expert combatant so he can go again because he, we we did our first attack and then we re-rolled using the treasure so using the expert combatant we can now take the second attack 
which will do against the uh, the spider swarm. So using expert combatant, he'll now attack the spider swarm. We'll roll the dice in our hands, and then we'll drop it in the tower. And we got a 14, so that should be, yeah, that even that by itself is good enough, even without the uh, plus 6 that we get from icing death. <clears throat> so we hit the spiders. <clears throat> so the spiders also go down and go into our experience pile. So I'll take the spiders off the table and place them over here. Now, rules, uh, the rules for this game are kind of weird in that no matter how many monsters you kill in a turn, you still only get to draw one treasure item. So it would seem like we should be able to draw another treasure item, but we can't. All right, so now, um, technically our movement is over, but since we have this stance token <clears throat> that says that whenever we use an attack power, we can move up to two squares before or after the attack. So now that we are done attacking, we will use our Dancing Serpent ability to move, uh, we'll go two squares up this way. That way we're on the unexplored edge of this tile. So now we'll draw a tile. And we got a black triangle, so we'll have our first encounter of the game. But before we do that, let's get our monster for this new tile. So draw a monster card, and it's going to be a a drow duelist. So I'll set that here. 16 armor class. So I think that's this one. No, that's the drow wizard. So, okay, it's one of these guys. Yep, that's the drow duelist. Okay, so we'll set the drow duelist down onto the Mushroom patch of the new tile, and let's start updating. So we explored, we got a black tile, we got the drow duelist, and by the way, we killed the spider swarm, we killed the hunting drake. And we don't know if we have any blessings or curses yet. Uh, there will be an encounter, so we'll take care of that. And then we have the drow duelist, and there's no villain. All right, so encounter next. And what do we get from the shadows? Choose the hero with the, hewest, uh, with the fewest hit points remaining. Place a new monster on that hero's tile. Man, that sucks. I would totally cancel that if I could. Um, so fewest hit points, that's going to be Drizzed. And this will get... Where's our discard for these? We'll put them up here. Okay, so a monster, so Drizz is going to get another monster. And he's going to get the Hypnotic Spirit, so put that there. And these are the Hypnotic Spirit, I believe. Yep. And I believe it just goes right on his tile. Let me just read that again. Yep, on that hero's tile. Okay, so on the tile, and the, since the mushroom patch is covered, we can put it wherever we want. And I'll just put it, put him here. That way he's adjacent to both Bruner and Drizzt. So we also have a hypnotic spirit to deal with. Okay, so the encounter is dealt with. Now the drow duelist will activate. If the Drow Duelist is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks twice. Twice? What? And attacks twice with a pair of slashing blades. Each attack can be against any hero adjacent to the Duelist. Yikes. Alright, so we'll have him move uh, here because he doesn't have to move to this tile because it doesn't say that he has to cross the, he doesn't say he has to move to the tile, he just has to be adjacent to. And he's going to get two attacks on Drizzt with a plus nine. Yikes. All right. So first attack is a resounding hit. Second attack. All right, so it bounced out. I'm not going to count that one. I didn't even look at it. And seven. So the seven probably misses. 
9 and 7 is 16. No, that hits. So they both hit. Wow. Okay, so Driz takes 2 damage. Bringing him down to 5. Before I do that, let me just check and see if there's anything I can do. Use when a monster within one tile of your hero would activate. Um, well, I can't use that now because it's already activated. Okay, so... So he takes the two damage from the Drow Duelist. Now the Hunting Spirit would activate. We can choose to have it not. But I think I'll save that. So now the Hypnotic Spirit will activate. If it's within a tile, it moves to the closest hero's tile. So this is one where specifically it says it moves to the tile. Attacks each hero on that tile with the horrifying howl. Okay, so it's going to attack both Bruner and Drizzt. Alright, so the first attack will be against Drizzt, since it's his turn. And that's a 7. 7 and 6 is 13, so that will miss. And now it will attack Bruner. And that's a 16, so that's going to be a hit. So Bruner's going to take 1. And that will be it for Driz's villain phase, so now it's Bruner's turn. Uh, Bruner is poisoned, so at the start of his hero phase, which is right now, he's automatically going to take a damage from being poisoned, so he's going to go down to 8. And now Bruner has a chance to go. So what options do we have? So first of all, I want to look at this. At the start of your hero phase, place your stance token on this card. Yeah, so again, I just I don't see any reason to not do this and to not just leave it on there permanently. Where's my stance token? I had it a minute ago. Um, Alright, so I am placing the stance token on here. I may have put it back in the box, but I'll um I'm but I'm declaring that I'm placing it on there. I'll put it back on there between turns. So his AC is now 18. So now, your hero or an adjacent hero regains two. So he's not adjacent to Driz, so he can't quite use that. So use your, look at the top two tiles of the dungeon tile stack. You can put one of those tiles on the bottom of the stack. That's amazing. And the other on top. You cannot put an adventure specified tile on the bottom of the stack. That's actually pretty cool. That will allows us just to get rid of one tile, basically. So we'll be using that. In fact, I'm just gonna use that right now. Uh, there's no. This isn't an. This isn't an attack or a movement. So it's just like a free ability. So we're going to. We're gonna do that. We're gonna look at the top two tiles. So one and two, and so we'll put this one on bottom because this one is a white tile. So this one will go on top, and this one goes on the bottom. So for free, we're now one tile closer, and I can't easily pick those up, so I'm just going to leave that there. But that's the bottom of the stack. So Bruner did that, and... Okay, so now attack one adjacent monster, so the hypnotic spirit is adjacent. And then it says, once during each of your hero phases, if this attack misses, you can use this power against a different adjacent monster. Okay, well, unfortunately, we only have the one adjacent monster, so... Alright, so Brunner's going to go ahead and attack the hypnotic spirit. He gets a plus seven on this attack, so we roll up the dice, drop it in the tray... And he got a 10, so let's see, does that hit? So the notched axe is 7, so that's 17. So, okay, yeah, so we easily uh, hit this Hypnotic Spirit. So Hypnotic Spirit goes down. Take this one off the table. And now... Bruner will move but let's go ahead and get him updated here so that he did not do he has not moved yet but he did attack he killed 
So we got a treasure card. I would have forgot that. So I'm glad that I have my tracker there. And let me get rid of the hypnotic spirit. Okay, so Brunner drawing treasure. And he gets brief rest. Play immediately. Your hero regains one hit point and flip up one of your used power items. That's awesome. Because, guess which one we're flipping up? That one. And he gains a hit point. So that's a good turn for Brunner. And then this gets discarded after use. Uh, technically that's the discard. Let me flip these over. All right, now, so now it's the end of Brunner's hero phase, so he gets a chance to uh, get unpoisoned by rolling to see if that happens. So we need to get a 10 or better, so we roll the dice a little bit in our hand, then drop it in the tray. And unfortunately, he's still poisoned. But now he has a chance to move. And his movement speed is not affected, so he can move five. So we'll have him move. Let me see here. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. That way he'll be adjacent to this guy. All right, so he's still poisoned. So let me have that follow him. He's on an unexplored edge. So let's go ahead and explore. And there we go. We got that white tile that we knew was coming. And now we'll draw a monster for Brunner. And we got Mark of Loth. This is a new one. I haven't seen this. Your hero is cursed. Place this card on your hero as a reminder. Each hero with at least one curse, including yours, takes one damage when this card is played. At the end of your hero phase, your hero can take one damage to discard this. Okay. So... Okay, so he's cursed for now, and he's poisoned. So we'll put that there just to remember. So that was so that was actually the monster. So technically, uh, he didn't get a monster. He got a curse instead. But he explored. He got a white tile. So there's no encounter, and he was cursed. The poison continues, and. Technically, we're still we're cursed. Uh, again, no encounter, no villain. And since he didn't get a monster, that is the end of turn number two.